Subscribe to journey started all the way back in 2018 with a double header which included the eels and the sharks thanks to Tom Freeney. Tom basically gave me the idea to, to do what I do. Uh, he was there since the beginning, he was there since day one and we are here at day 100. And really great achievements, so I'm looking forward to this. I want to thank everyone who sent through messages tonight as well. I uh, was so close to 3,000 subscribers which is absolutely amazing and I'm um, really looking forward to tonight's game and, and celebrating with you guys. with me here but I feel like the Raiders premiership chances are coming slowly towards a close they've been a really good team the last couple of years they've still got a pretty decent team but if Charles Nickel Klockstad goes Nick Kotrick's gone this team looks like they could start to probably still make around the bottom of the eight but the premiership window starts to come to a close yeah no I I would tend to agree there I think a big in is having Hodgson back Josh Hodgson back I think that's yes. Really exciting uh, in the middle there. But in terms of having the X factor, I mean, not having Bateman, I know um, Elliot Whitehead has apparently stepped up at training and has really taken on that role. But whether or not he delivers that on the field, if he can stay uninjured, I I really rate Whitehead. Um, so yeah. it, it's a good opportunity, but you're right. I don't know how this year could be the last year. Um, but I think for me, in attendance, I'd have to say the... And you've gone away from finals, but I'm going to final. Uh, 2018, the Rabbitohs and the Dragons at ANZ Stadium. Uh, yeah. Adam Reynolds scores all 13 points. That was just unforgettable. Um, but it's good to see that you, you do get to those games. Will you be going to Magic Round? Uh, I won't be going to Magic Round this year, unfortunately. Um, and, yeah, you are right. I, I have done a few vlogs myself. Um, and, like, I've watched some of yours and props to you, man, because whenever I pull the camera out and people start looking, I start to get super anxious and then I'm, I can't talk fluently and clearly and um, for you to do what you do and, you know, at, at the game live with people walking and stuff, man, props to you because I, I couldn't do it. I, could, I couldn't handle the anxiety from it all. I'll tell you right now, man, it gets to fame yourself and uh, Blake. So it was a very different move. But you come back and you have this massive year. Unfortunately, you don't make the finals. You just miss out on final. But for yourself, you win the player of the year amongst Canberra. How was that feeling? And was this one of the biggest moments for you of overcoming adversity? Yeah, it was. I, I sort of had uh, a moment like that back in uh, 2000, I think it was 14 maybe, um, you know, I would, just wasn't playing the best of footy and uh you know the same thing um you know we got off to a, a pretty slow start as a club and um you know i'd probably say 18 was probably the best shape i've ever been in a you know in a long time and um you know being dropped wasn't um you know easy to cop at the time but you, you basically grew up together and and known each other and you're all kind of making your debuts at these different times but the thing is when you make a debut you don't always stay in the squad and the fact that you dylan and uh oregon are now i guess you can argue whether you'll be starting in the 2021 season is an argument to be made but the fact that you're playing at first grade level now and that must be definitely a dream come true for all three of you yeah yeah it's unreal like they, we always had those talks at um like our training camps and stuff, just saying like there would always be only one of us that to make it and stuff, and four or three of us to go through and sort of keep playing. It wasn't your personal favorite try. I think a lot of people can can debate against you in that one. In in two thousand seven, you obviously made your debut, and I know you weren't part of the premiership squad in two thousand six, but I want to know per, a bit personal around the club of two thousand seven. After having a, a decent season and, and winning the premiership, to go out to the storm in week one of the finals, was there a bit of disappointment around that? And, and how was that first year of, of coming off that premiership drought and then actually, I guess, making finals but being a little bit underdone? How did, how did it feel as a club? Uh, well, I was a part of the, the first grade squad in 2006. So I was a part of that 2006 
squad. I just wasn't part of the, the team that played in the grand final. I was actually 18th mm -hmm. man in 2006, once or twice. Um, in 2007, to be honest, like, I was just so stoked that I debuted. I, I didn't really, you know, when you're, when you're a rookie, you're just... Put it on Instagram if we can get it. I'm getting it on Instagram. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Campbell Gillard. Tackled. Marnie to play it. Oh, it's in front. Come on. Come on. Come on, Gutho. Come on. Yeah. He's got it. Let's go. It's full on score here. It'll make it so much worse. Oh, go! 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 Oh, I'm running away from my bosses. Bro, bro. Who's ready for some second half action, Clyde? Six again. Go. Dylan Brown. If Seymour gets the ball. I'll go Seymour. Seymour hit his fourth try. Four tries.
51 to 6, Timmy. Uh oh. On the field. What's your tip for the game in first try score? Yeah, nil all to about the 70th minute. Kapoa Matangi comes on to score. No. Um, you know, I'm just going to go with Corey Allen. He's been red hot lately. Um, I think he'll continue that form. Great partnership with Cody Walker. And I don't know the exact score, but I'm chipping south to win 13 plus, if you can hear me. There you go. There you go. Here with Eels Fan TV at Carnage House Productions. What do you think of the match, guys? Pretty good. Not great. Second half. Look, it was it was it was a workers' win. It was a win for the people. Who asked I mean, it wasn't. <laughs> look, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't clean. We <laughs> got the job done. We got a two. Know what this guy thinks? Oh, wait, we're about defense. We're the best defense is a, look, the best you, offense. Hey, look. Let me That's tell you. This guy's coming in here with with all these insults. But let me tell you, he's the feeling today. He's the feeling. What's your what's your what's your score prediction each for rabbits and eels next week? I think we smash them. Mate, I, I don't honestly think it's even close. Yeah, 18-6 eels. 18-4 eels. 18-4. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Thirty to sixteen. New South Wales, eighteen points to sixteen. There you go. Queensland to beat New South Wales, eighteen points to sixteen. Incredibly hard game to tip. I guess you could argue. No, it's not. New South Wales all the way. But at the same time, we saw uh, what we could do in game one, believed in ourselves after half time, and I think we might just do it again here. So let's get into some uh, try scoring and some multi kind of bets. But there's my tip, guys. The Maroons to beat New South Wales in the Origin Decider, 18 points to 16 tomorrow night. So let's get into some, uh, some best bets. Queensland at a... Three dollar price, nice price there. Uh, previously at three sixty and three dollars forty, so obviously lowered. Uh, even though they got smashed last week, New South Wales at a dollar forty one at this Origin decider. I've picked a couple bets here. So my first one is my own multi, paying thirty three dollars. Now I've gone with the Maroons to win head to head, um, which at three dollars isn't bad anyway itself into Valentine Holmes, he'll be playing on the wing, familiar territory, I think he'll score a try, I think it's a lock, so Valentine Holmes, and I think this bloke didn't have a great game one, had a really good game two, and I think he can score again, um, those high balls um, are his key, Daniel Tupo into under 42 and a half points, so 42 or less points, in I'm just glad it's here after two months, uh, sent to the wrong addresses, sent to the wrong person from the card company. There's just so much going on. Really nice patch. It is numbered 18 of 40. Chanel Harris-Tavita from the New Zealand Warriors. A lot of people messaging me saying they love this player. 
Uh, in jersey number 18 for this particular game, where the Knights win 34-0 in round one. Let's have a look at the patch. Now, the patch here, if you see, is... If you can see me doing that, compare that, it's really bumpy. Almost like it wasn't packed properly, or like it's got a stitching cut in it, because there's a little thread out of it. But it's a really nice booklet. The dark black looks nice. And I'm pretty sure this is from the Nines jersey. I think they used the Nines jersey for the Chanel Harris Tevita. But I'm going to hold a few of these up for you just to show you just how cool these booklets are together. Especially um, the Spotlight booklets. Just so you can get a little idea of what they look like. I might chuck the Para one up for you guys. But, uh, yeah. That is as much as I can hold right now. But the Spotlight booklets are phenomenal in person. As I said, they are literally worth hundreds of dollars. So the fact at the moment, so I'm really looking forward to that battle. Um, I'm also looking forward to Kyle Felt versus Edric Lee, two fantastic wingers. You know what, guys? I'm going to go for a bit of an upset here. I think the Knights have been in some real good form. I think Bradman's a big loss. And I, I do think the Knights will go in this game as favourites, and so they should. I think the Cowboys might win. They're at home. I know there's not many fans there, I know, so don't get me with home field advantage. The Knights haven't had to travel all year. They've played at Central Coast. They've played... Open. Sorry. Oh, nice. So there is the EH logo. And then on the back design you've got the entertain house writing and it kind of looks like a bit of a qr code love the blue the blue color scheme really works for the channel let's put this on quickly because i want to get back into my moses shirt so simple logo on the front seen plenty of it with on the front and back you can kind of choose and customize your designs in regards to colors it's something i'm working on whether i can make grey and black shirts, um, it can be done. So let me know if you do want that. I've had a few requests for that, so it is something I'm looking at, but it won't be straight away. Um, so nice design on the front. Let's have a look at the back. Well, I can't have a look, but you guys will have a look. Bang. The Alex Glenn League Sensation, numbered 27 of 90. And the bang. Dylan Brown, Young Gun Signature, numbered 37 of 90. Well, well, time to clean up and go through the uh, base cards and stuff. That was all in an AFL Prestige box, but it was all 24 random packets of Elite. I can't wait to open up Phoenix Crosland. There's no changes there, really. Jake Amarillo is back for the Bulldogs. He is named in jersey number four. Siase Su and Christian Crichton are out. Uh, Dean Britt is in the reserves. And Remus Smith is also in the reserves in jersey 20. Look, I think the Dogs, they'll get a few points, but not many. So I'm going to take the Knights here. And I'm going to take the Knights by 16. I think they'll win this game 28 points to 12. Um, I think the Dogs haven't showed much all year. And look, they did show something against the Dragons, but... I think Kurt Mann and Mitchell Pearce um, have been in really good form in the halves. Pong has been decent at the back. Their centres have been good. Their forwards, Newcastle were...